that says Dane Francisco. So, different last name. What's that? Different last and name. Different last name, yeah. But there's a lot of Torres here, too, as well. So, you're kind of you're kind of running in the right vein. So, that's great. Hey, tell us a little bit about what your life was like before Christ saved you. I was born into a Catholic church, and we would attend every Sunday without missing service, unless I was sick or we were out of town. I was an altar boy at the church, but all those years in the church as a young kid, nothing would look like Christ. My parents attended as part of culture, just to check the box. But as soon as we left the parking lot, they would go back to their old selves. Before Christ, I lived in sin and did not know who God was, nor was I interested in finding out. I did not compare myself to others to measure up my moral standards. I would just do me. I did not trust anyone. This included people who wanted to talk about God, especially those people. I would push them away and tell them I was okay. I did not need to, I did not need their God. I would just do things that made me feel good and comfortable and would avoid going out of that comfort zone. In the process, I did not want to be noticed. I wanted to go unnoticed people around me would not want to talk to me. I was drunk, many, among many other things, to numb the pain and suppress my trauma I experienced as a child. This was the main reason, maybe, I did not want to allow anyone to get close. Inside me there was nothing, just empty space. I had no fruits to show, nor give, since I was dead inside. I preferred it that way. I ran away from home at age 15, and I was on my own, sleeping on friends' living rooms, or sometimes even a front porch. I joined the military and I thought to myself, this was my ticket out, but I was wrong. I was still dead inside as a rock. If anything, it made me tougher and colder towards people. I showed less sympathy or compassion if I ever showed any, and I drank even more and continued to make more poor choices. So how did the Lord uh, get a hold of that lifestyle to get pushing people away and having no interaction? How did he crack through that and uh, actually awaken you to your need for a savior? Years later, I was married and had children, but my character hadn't changed. I continued to live in sin, and in the process, I hurt my family. I would ask myself, how could I hurt them and cause them pain? But no matter the circumstances, Christina stood by me. Christina and I attended various churches and had met this older couple who shared the gospel with us. And to this day, we stay in touch. One day, we were attending a local church in San Jose, California, and I remember sitting there just wondering why me? Why did I have to be put through the things I went through? I, would felt, I felt disgust and hatred towards myself because I was hurting the people I was supposed to love. The day, that day in September 2018, I broke down in church and all I could think to myself is how desperately lost I was and how corrupt my heart was. I knew that I was a sinner and deserved hell. I started to pray and pray and things began to make a little bit more sense. For example, what the cross really meant. The cross died on the cross to pay for my sins and then he rose from the dead. It was not just a cross that I would carry on Sundays as an altar boy. I humbled myself and understood that all the things that happened in my life were not for my will, but for God's will. Awesome. So you surrendered your life to Christ at that particular point, and then uh, how has he changed your life since that has occurred? When I repented from my sin, I placed my faith in Jesus Christ. Something changed inside me. I became thirsty for the word of God and wanted to know more. God gave me a new heart and forgave me for my sins. Even though I battle with my deadly flesh still, I forgave, I forgave those who harmed me just like God forgave me. I want to honor and serve him in any way I can. He took out the desires for me to be a drum, to numb the pain I had felt and replaced it with the desire to study and obey his word so that I can teach disciple as best as I can to other men and advise them through their struggles. I am part of the Renovad community group where we encourage one another for discipleship, prayer, and accountability. It is important to be part of the body of Christ as the Bible tells us to bear one another's burdens. Galatians 6.2, pray for one another. James 5.16, accept one another. Romans 15.7, and forgive one another. Colossians 3.13, 
It implies that we are in close relationship with other Christians, and I have a heart to serve and have recently began serving. I have recently began to assist in greeting ministry and have enjoyed making current and newcomers feel welcome to the church. That's awesome. Would you? Uh...